Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us in our sanctuary and online. I'm Jim Kaplan, a Beth Torah member. I'm pleased to lead worship tonight as Shaliach Sibur, an emissary of our congregation. I'm joined by Leslie Zucker, our music director, Carmen Deeker, Howard Pittler, and by our technical team. Uh, thank you to the Beyond Our Walls, B-O-W, BOW committee for keeping us connected and to our digital docents for managing the streaming of our worship. If you're technically inclined and would like to help out, please contact the office staff for more information about volunteering. If you're joining us on one of our streaming platforms, first of all, thank you. And secondly, the links to the PDF of the prayer pages and other information will be posted in the comments section to my left or available in your e-news, which you received this week. For those of you in, here in person tonight, most of the prayers will be in your handout uh, and the pages will be announced right there. For immediate technological help, if you have difficulty, you may reach out to CBT's technical assistant line, TAL, TAL, at 913-303-1134. Text your phone number, and a docent will call you back as soon as they can. We welcome Shabbat together by lighting the Shabbat candles. The blessing is on page 120. And if you have two sets of numbers, we're using the ones in the square brackets. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu le'hadlik ner, le'hadlik ner, Shall shabbat. Amen. On page 130, we join in singing the first two lines of Psalm 95 that begins, Come, let us sing joyously to Adonai. We greet Shabbat on page 138 with Lachado D, verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. 
Noam Katz, the composer of the melody for our next prayer, was reportedly inspired by a midrash. The prayer evokes the mood of Adam's first night on earth, alone in Gan Eden. Adam shuddered as the sun began to descend from the sky, fearful that it would never rise again and that he would be relegated to a lifetime of darkness. Watching and waiting, he grew tired as the last light faded. He then slept until the first gleam of daybreak emerged again from the horizon. The light had returned. Adam realized that this would be the way of God's world. The passing of time, the seamless flow of light into dark and darkness back into light. He discovers that he will have to navigate life cycles of light and levity, of darkness and difficulty. Roll into dark, roll into night. Night becomes day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into light. Night becomes day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into light. Night becomes day, day turns to night. Night becomes day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into night. Night becomes day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into night. Night becomes day, day turns 
Micha page 158. Micha Mocha, Baili Madonai. Micha Mocha, Netarba Kodesh. Micha Mocha, Baili Madonai. Micha Mocha, Netarba Kodesh. Shame 
we read together on page 160. Grant, O God, that we lie down in peace and raise us up, our guardian, to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with your good counsel. For your name's sake, be our help. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings. Defend us against enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over us and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our going and coming to life and to peace evermore. Blessed are you, Adonai, guardian of Israel, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people Israel, and over Jerusalem. We begin the Amida together on pages 164 through 170, and then continue reading silently to page 180, adding the prayers that are in your hearts. When you have completed your prayers, please be seated. <laughs> Oh, 
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu v'loheavoteinu v'imoteinu Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leah Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora El elyon gomel chasadim tovim v'kone ha'kol V'zocher ha'stei avot v'imahot Ume vigula livne vnehem, leman shemo beahava, malachozer umoshia umagin, baruchata adonai, magin avraham bezrat sarah, atagi borle lamadonai, mechaye metimata rab lehoshia, morid hatal, mechalkel chayim bechesed, Mechaye metim berachamim rabim, so mech no flim berofe holim, umatir asurim, umechaye emunato lishene afar. Micha mocha bal gevurot, umido melach. Melech me meet, who mechaye, who mats me a Yeshua, the manatalachayot made him, Baruchata donai, mechaye ha made him, Atakadosh, Bashim Kakadosh, Ugroshim Bachoyom Yahalu Hasela, Baruchata donai. Shalom, 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 Shalom,
The Mishabarach prayer asks for healing. There is a list of those who need our prayer of healing, be it emotional, spiritual, or physical, in the e-news that you received this morning. The link is also at the left in the comments. If you have additional names to add, please type them in the comments section now so that we may include them in our prayers. For those of you here, we offer an opportunity to identify others who may need our prayers. Craig Zucker. The words to the Mishaberach are on page 371. offer a prayer for those who help support those who are in need. May those who take care of the sick with their hands, their voices, and their hearts be blessed with courage and stamina. May those who pursue healing <coughs> sorry, through medical skills and knowledge be blessed with insight, patience, and compassion. May all of us, the sick and the well together, find courage and hope, and let us say, Amen. amen. So with those of you uh, who are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or just something cool that happened this week, uh, please come up and share your Simcha with the, with the congregation and with those who are uh, uh, listening. If those who are uh, online, please type it in the side comments and be sure to remember to enter. Um, if you could come up to the spot if anyone has a Simcha this week, um, there's a spot marked on the floor and it'll project perfectly to the microphone. Is there though? There is. Oh, there That's is. Right there. I see it. Yeah, yeah. It's in gray, <laughs> on green. I gotta write a song for people long enough to say their stuff. You gotta stand on there. Hi, we're Karen um, and Ken Liebenau. And we are celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. Awesome. Which happens to be half my, I've been married half my life now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The best half. <laughs> the best half. I've been more, married more than half my life, so hey. <laughs> and more is yet to come, I hope. And I'm Howard Pittler, and Wednesday was my birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. So, in honor of that, I have three short stories to tell related to the theme of gratitude and to tonight's Simcha blessing. In the Torah... When Moses is bringing down the plagues on Egypt, he's not the one who turns the Nile River into blood or brings frogs from the river. 
His brother Aaron invokes these plagues. The commentator Rashi explains that the river had protected Moses when he was an infant and therefore he could not start a plague against it. Rashi sees this as a message from God that we should be open to expressing our gratitude, even to inanimate objects. Rabbi Eliyahu Lopian, who lived from 1872 to 1970, realize that's 98 years, was once talking to a student after prayers and folding his talus at the same time. The rabbi's talus was quite large, and he had to rest it on a bench to fold it so that it would not lie on the floor. After he finished folding, Reb Elia noticed that the bench was dusty, so he headed out to find a towel to wipe it off. The students saw what the rabbi was doing and ran to get a towel for him. Reb Elia held up his hand saying, no, no, I must clean it myself, for I'm obligated to show my gratitude to the bench upon which I folded my talus. Reb Elia knew that God wants us to show our gratitude every day and in every possible situation. Harold, the shopkeeper, had closed his store and was taking the week's proceeds to the bank for deposit. He cut through the alley to shorten his trip and suddenly he was confronted by two masked men carrying guns. Harold, fearing for his life, closed his eyes and began to pray. Please God, save me. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll go to the synagogue. I'll travel to Israel and establish a shul. I'll give half of my income to charity. Please save me. At that moment, a police car pulled into the alley and the thugs ran away into the shadows. Harold looked upward and said, never mind God, I took care of it myself. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, we'll read from a section of Parshat Akev that addresses this subject of gratitude. Moses warns the Israelites that historically, it's been easy to feel they felt gratitude to God for bringing them through the difficult times, but he cautions them that when you are in times of plenty, you should not slip into the false impression that they have succeeded alone, but rather they should recognize that they always owe their gratitude to God for their success. We are honored that you chose to celebrate these simchas with us tonight. We hope you're fortunate to have many more, and in your honor, we offer the following prayer. Divine source of blessing, we thank you for everything that enriches our lives. We turn to you now with gratitude as we share the happiness of all those who have come forward to mark their simcha moments that enhance their weeks. Adonai be with them now and always. May they be blessed with health and happiness and the strength to overcome sickness and sorrow. Amen. We acknowledge the gifts that, you, that each one of you brought to this sacred community as we join together in the singing of Shehechianu. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu v'kimanu v'higianu Bazman hazeh Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu v'kimanu v'higianu Bazman hazeh So this Shabbat, we read from Parsha Akev. This is the second of Moses' end of life, summarized from the mountains so future generations don't lose the message treatises. He began presenting the Deuteronomic theology in Ve'etchanan last week and continues this week in Akev. The Parsha opens, Bahaya Akev Tishmaun et Hamishpatim. It will happen if you obey these rules or because you obey these rules. Akev pre presents a conditional if-then relationship that we are to apply to our everyday actions. In this parsha, the concepts that became part of our central prayer, the Shema, are couched in the conditional language of if-then and because. This section may feel a little unfamiliar to those of you who grew up as Reformed Jews uh, because it has been in our liturgy and out of our liturgy and in our liturgy. Um, in the 2004 platform statement by the CCAR rabbis, the section of the Persha Akev that became the second paragraph of the Shema was interpreted as emphasizing that never forgetting our environment underscores the traditional Jewish commitment to take care of God's world. Rashi the commentator notes 
that the Hebrew letters of the word akev are the same as the Hebrew letters of the word akev, or heel. His interpretation of the significance of this double meaning is that the heel is the lowest part of the body. Therefore, all of the upright body depends on the presence of the heel for balance. Midrash teaches that when people fail to follow God's simplest commandments and hence trample them beneath their heels, they can't metaphorically remain upright to follow the more complex commandments, and they will ultimately fail to serve God. In this case, sweating the little stuff really does matter. Moses contrasts Egypt and the promised land of Canaan, using them as metaphors for how we should approach the challenges we encounter in life. At this point, the Jewish people were about to enter Israel, although without Moses, and Moses points out that the promised land is not like Egypt. Formerly, the land they sowed in Egypt was irrigated by the Nile River. The Nile had many mountain and river tributaries that fed its continuous flow from the melting snow of the mountains to the spring rains of Ethiopia. In Egypt, they could create a ditch in their fields and with a mere redirection of a mound of dirt with their heels, note the power of the heel, they could have water from the Nile to grow grain and the supply was just endless. On the other hand, in the new land they would possess, the hills and valleys were watered directly by rains from heaven. The if-then relationship was far more brittle. The Parsha tells us that this land is looked after by God and thus its fertility is more immediately contingent upon God's provision of rain. Life in the promised land was going to require ongoing attention to the details of the commandments, the ifs. This is currently interpreted to be an admonition that we are entrusted to the world that God created and to treat it with proper care. In Parsha Akev, according to Moses, the agreement behind if-then does not work if we don't do the if part right. This doesn't necessarily mean that every good action is rewarded with obvious positive result. Some people pray to God and then complain when their prayers are not answered. This is not theologically compatible with our current understanding of the person to God relationship. God hears every prayer, says the sages, but sometimes the answer is just no. Reformed theology also finds the idea inadequate that, for example, I stubbed my toe today because I transgressed a mitzvah yesterday. That's just not very reform. To interpret the if-then agreement, the question is not, did God hear me today? But rather, the more personalized question, did I do what God wanted of me today? That should transform potential disappointment of the immediate event into a message to do what is right in life. Internalizing the concept of looking beyond contingencies in our daily life is a way of seeking a holier life. The sage Maimonides speaks of doing the truth because it is true that is, doing things without a conditional outcome. There are simply some things that we are to do because they have virtue, not because of an if-then relationship. Modern Reformed Judaism emphasizes that our individual relationship with God and our Judaism should not be based on a contingency. On the other hand, we must also recognize the relative minutia of our personal actions and how they do have daily implications. Recognizing the consequence of our actions with an if-then relationship is the foundation that is the heel on which stands the greater principle of doing the right thing without contingency. We should seek to act in ways that are right, not because they have rewards, but simply because they are right. Moses advised us to do this long ago, warning that we might forget in the future. By reading Parsha Akev every year, we are reminded that it remains a lifestyle we all should aspire to practice. Can you hear that son? The Elenu is on page uh, uh, 586. Please rise. Aleinu le shabeach la don hakol la teit kidu la leot shelo asanu kegoye haratzot velo osamanu kemishpechot adama Shalom sam khalkenu kahem vego horalenu kho hamona banahu kori ubishakhabi mudi bifnay mala malkhe hamakhim hakadosh baruchu 
As we prepare for Kadisha Tom, we join together in reading at the top of page 593. In nature's ebb and flow, God's eternal law abides. When tears dim our vision or grief clouds our understanding, we often lose sight of God's eternal plan. Yet we know that growth and decay, life and death, all reveal a divine purpose. God, who is our support in the struggles of life, is also our hope in death. We have set God before us and shall not despair. In God's hands are the souls of all the living and the spirits of all flesh. Under God's protection we abide, and by God's love we are comforted. O life of our life, soul of our souls, cause your light to shine into our hearts and fill our spirits with abiding trust in you. We think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us uh, and those who died uh, in seasons this in, past, in years past. Those who were laid to rest this week or in the Shiva period include Drake Taylor, loved one of Ellen Merrill, and Marsha Lynn Yates Roberts, mother of Darcy Demetra Hill. Those whose yurtsites occur this, this, seat, this time, Sylvia Becker, Esther Belmont, Dorothy Botwin, Sylvia Sue Carter, Lynn Grossman, Herman Katz, Monica Kitt, Eliana Kucharovsky, Izzy Ozar, Patricia Schlesinger, Irving Shames, Aida Timmerman, Alexander Weisflegel. If you are here to say Kaddish for someone you have lost, please let us know their names so we may include them in our prayers. Kaddish Yatom is on page 598. We rise as a community to support those in mourning. Yitzgadal v'yit gadash shmei rabah v'alma divra hiritei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei v'kol beit Yisrael v'agalau v'zman kariv v'imru amen. Yehei shmei rabah m'varach v'alam o'meil maya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit ba'ar v'yit ramam v'yit naseh Viet Adar, Viet Ale, Viet Alal, Shme de Kudisha, Rehu. La Ela min Kol Birkata Vashirata, Tushbachata Venechemata, Da Amiran Vilma, Viru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba min Shmaya, Vachaim Alenu, Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Ramav, Huya Se Shalom, Alenu, Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Ose shalom bim roma Uya se shalom aleinu Ve'ako Yisrael Ve'imru Ve'imru I'd like to invite up uh, Aviva Simons, director of All Things Congregational, um, member, member engagement, um, for some announcements. So I think that, is that right? Let me, okay.
Speaking of the Beyond Our Walls Committee, thank you very much to David Thal and Dave Zucker for literally bringing us beyond our walls tonight and so all of us can hear within the sanctuary. That's good. <laughs> our celebration of Shabbat continues tomorrow with Sichat Shabbat, our Shabbat conversation at 9 o'clock a.m., and then our Shabbat morning service at 10.30 a.m. Both are multi-access, so all are welcome to join us here at Beth Torah and virtually. Next. Three- and four-year-olds and their families join Rabbi Kleinman at Meadowbrook Park this Saturday. Nope, Sunday. This Sunday, August 1st at 10 a.m. to meet new friends and learn about the Weiner Religious School's 5782 school year. And later this week, join Leslie for multi-access song session, High Holy Day Melodies Edition. Can you believe it? <laughs> I think uh, those of us on the Bema are a little bit shocked by it. On Tuesday, August 3rd at 7 p.m., all are welcome to join Leslie physically here at Beth Torah and virtually. Next. Two deadlines to keep in mind, which I just wanted to mention very briefly you still have the opportunity to add your name to our inaugural Congregation Beth Torah Rosh Hashanah card by Sunday at 5 p.m., which is when it closes. But this is a wonderful opportunity to wish our entire congregation a Shana Tova, a good year, by signing our card. And you can do that through the website or speak to me after the service. And um, you still have a wonderful opportunity to share your passions as a prospective 5782 small group leader by Tuesday, August 10th. So our small groups is a wonderful way for all of us to find our passions and our people at Beth Torah. And here tonight we have three small group leaders from this past year. So you'll have to ask around to figure out who they are, but it's a wonderful opportunity to do what you do and share it with others. Next. Okay. All CBT alumni and friends in their 20s and 30s are welcome to join me for Simcha Hour, get it? Simcha <laughs> Happy Hour? <laughs> At Harpo's in Westport on Friday, August 13th. Next. Sorry, I was busy laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and all of Jewish Kansas City is welcome to join us poolside for Poolside Havdalah on Saturday, August 14th at the J. Registration is required and all non-Beth Torah members who join us will receive complimentary High Holy Day tickets. So it really will be a wonderful evening. And lastly, join us for Oneg after our closing song. Toda Rabbah, thank you to Howard and Gloria Pittler for sponsoring tonight's Oneg in honor of Howard's birthday this past Wednesday, July 28th. Happy belated birthday to Howard. Shabbat Shalom. I can't wait to go out and take a closer look at that picture now. Did not know that picture was here. Your wife is the best. <laughs> See, uh, uh, Howard from long ago. <laughs> Past um, Howard. So our closing song is Ain Kelohenu. You can find it on page 626. And uh, please join in and uh, stand if you wish. In Kelo, hey, hey, new, in Cadon, hey, new, in Kemal, hey, new, in Kemoshi, hey, new, in Kelo, hey, new, in Kemal, hey, new, in Kemal, hey, new, in Kemoshi, hey, new, Adon, me, Kelo, hey, new, me, Cadon, hey, new, me, Atahu Elohenu, Atahu Adonenu, Atahu Malkenu, Atahu Moshienu.
Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Take care of each other out there. Mwah.